Hi everyone. Nice to be in a home city where everyone can understand what I'm saying. Um, doesn't always happen. Today I'm here to tell you about the little girl in this photograph behind me because I want to use the voice I've got now that she didn't have back then. That's me as a kid and I had two things that I loved more than anything and they were football and boxing. Now, the ban on women's football in this country wasn't lifted until 1971 and the Football Association weren't involved till 93. So as a kid like me in the 80s at primary school, there were very few opportunities for girls in football and we also weren't allowed to play with the boys. So this made it really difficult because it was all I wanted to do. Playtime, lunchtime, I'd be out there, me and a gazillion boys playing football and I loved every minute. Now, we eventually had like a, a team training session and I went along and soon enough we had our first game and we were so excited to put on that little green kit and I remember putting my socks on over my shin pads and tying my laces in a double knot my first ever pair of football boots that my dad got me from Woolworths. Um, and it was just thrilling when that whistle went to be playing in my first proper football game as part of a team. Now during that game, parents and a coach on the other team realised there was a girl and very loudly insisted that I be made to leave the pitch. That sinking feeling of walking across that field, I couldn't articulate as a kid, but I now know those feelings to have been of shame and humiliation and I felt like a freak just for playing the sport I loved. Somehow it didn't deter me though, and I went home and insisted that my mum have my hair cut short. As you can see, she's no hairdresser. <laughs> <laughs> so I could pretend to be a boy and play on the team. But this led to problems with kids saying, why do you want to be a boy? Well, I never wanted to be a boy. I just wanted to play football, and at the time, this was the only way. Now in boxing, this is me watching my dad sparring in the gym. My dad was a boxer, my granddad ran our gym. I loved everything about the sport from the minute I was introduced to it. I even loved the gym, which is really stinky, but I loved the sound of the whirring of the skipping rope, the gloves punching the bag, even the tough training, I just loved it. I got to the age of 11, when you can usually start boxing, I went to my granddad and I said, granddad, I'm ready, I'm ready to box. And he just looked at me and he said, you can't box, kid. I mean, what are you on about? And he said, it's against the law for girls. And it was back then illegal for females to box. And I was gutted. I couldn't believe I wouldn't get to do the sport that I loved. Now, I did carry on with both football and boxing. And it led to a lot of name calling at school, particularly these, shim, she, male, and boy. People couldn't get past the fact that if I was a girl doing boys' sports, I must therefore want to be a boy. Also, I'm heterosexual, but persistently people have made assumptions about my sexuality based on the sports that I do. And as a youngster, these things were really confusing. And I thought there must be something wrong with me for wanting to do these sports. Eventually, I came to realise, of course I didn't want to be a boy. I was an extraordinary girl. I was doing something different. That's why role models matter. As a kid, there were no female visible boxers or footballers. Everyone I looked up to was male. And of course I wanted to be like them, but not because of their gender. I wanted to be a great footballer or a great boxer. That's why it's important we get a range of role models in front of kids. And why I'm particularly passionate about being the role model now for kids that I didn't have growing up. Now, I was 17 when I got my first England call up. And I, I can't, honestly, when, when you get that letter and it's got those three lines on it, it absolutely blows your mind. And I remember reading it over and over and over. Have they made a mistake? Have they made a mistake? And I had some incredible experiences in football. I played in the Premier League in this country for many different teams. I went to America on a scholarship for five years and I finished playing in Sweden. I achieved everything I wanted to. I played in the FA Cup final, representing my country, and I got to play abroad. So I had some phenomenal experiences um, as a footballer. And by the time I'd done that, I was in my late 20s and I'd never ever lost that dream and hunger and desire to be a boxer, so I went into boxing. Now I didn't get to go to the Olympics the Commonwealth Games or the European Games because they don't have equal weight categories for women in boxing and mine wasn't one of them. And it was devastating to not even get the chance to compete at those prestigious tournaments. But I did get to go to the world and the Europeans. This was me and my dad, he was my amateur coach and it was when I won my first national title. And it meant that we were both the first father and daughter to both win senior national titles. So it was a really special moment for us. But this was the pinnacle. Having been not allowed to do the sport as a kid to then standing on that podium with a silver medal around my neck at the European Championships, watching my country's flag be raised was just an absolutely incredible feeling. Likewise, when I made my pro debut, as a kid, I used to cut a slice off a cucumber and mold my own gum shield and be running around the house. I'm gonna be a world champion. I wasn't even allowed to do the sport then. But yet here I was years later, best of all, in my home city of Manchester, 
making my professional debut in front of all my family and friends, and it really taught me that incredible things can be possible. And then I got to fight for the Commonwealth title. What an unbelievable experience we had in Zimbabwe, visiting many schools, meeting some incredible people. The fight itself was the toughest of my life, because to be fair, she was an absolute unit and she hit really hard. <laughs> it was a tough fight. But I came through it, and if I was to try and describe what that moment was like, of making history as the first British woman to win that title, and everything I'd been through to get to that point of realizing that dream, I don't think I could do it justice. So instead, if you mind, I would, I'd like to share that moment with you so at least you might be able to feel a little bit of what realizing that dream felt like for me. Ladies and gentlemen, our scorecards are in. And the scores read as follows. We have a unanimous decision, scores of 93 to 98, 92, 97, 91 to 98. And your winner, and now holder of the vacant Commonwealth Super Welterweight female title, from Manchester All right, only got 15 minutes. As you can see, me and my coach like to play things cool. We don't like to... What an incredible moment. It still gives me goosebumps every time I watch that. And it was a dream, except then it came crashing down quite quickly after. Because as you'll see, this is me and my coach after the fight with a photograph of the belt, because I didn't get an actual belt. So upon my return from Zimbabwe, I rang the head of the Commonwealth Boxing Council, as you do, and I said, you know, I want to ask about this belt. And I was told, well, um, the manufacturer of the replica belt has ceased production. I said, what's that got to do with me? So he said, well, we do replica belts for women and real belts for men. So I said, okay, why is that? He said, well, there's more money in men's boxing. I said, I know, but surely, even if it meant paying for it with my own money, I should have had the option to have that belt because I will never get that moment back of winning my first title. And to be honest, the worst moment wasn't straight after the fight, as I thought it would be. It was that the, the fight had been live streamed back home. All our friends and family had watched it. And they were dead excited to see this belt. And they hadn't had the heart to tell them there wasn't one. And when me and my coach got back to Manchester Airport, so many of them had come to surprise us. Not having that belt to share with them in that moment was heartbreaking. And that's wrong. It should never happen. So I explained this to him and I said, right, nothing we can do now. How quickly can I have a real belt? To which he said, um, you can have one within the next couple of weeks but they are quite expensive. So unless you've got a sugar daddy, you probably won't be able to have one. Now, it's hard to explain that burning sense of injustice that I felt inside in that moment. I worked full-time at a school at that point. I've worked throughout my sports career and still do. But I also, although I'm very, very impatient for change, I recognize the importance to allow space for that change to happen and for people to evolve. It doesn't help necessarily to jump down everyone's throat who says something you don't agree with. So instead we had a dialogue and we both agreed this shouldn't happen to a future female champion. And the Commonwealth Boxing Council did a great job of creating the first ever women's Commonwealth title belt, which we received in December 2018, and that's now available for the fighters. That's one way I consider myself to be paving the way for the next generation in my sport. So how can we all be part of paving the way to create this positive social change? I think we need to start by questioning things. Quite often, things stay the same because simply nobody questions them. And just because it's always been that way doesn't mean it's right. So for example, if you're at a local sports club, ask, oh, do you have the same opportunities for girls as boys? If the answer's no, let's challenge it and ask, why not? If we're not given a reasonable answer, let's feel compelled to change it. So let's have some examples. Number one, language. We use throw like a girl, kick like a girl, and other examples to mean we're doing something rubbish. Why? When there's so many incredible sportswomen who are excellent at these skills. We hear people say, stop being a girl. Why is it still socially acceptable to use girl as an insult? Let's question, challenge, and change the language that we use around gender. Labels. I've represented my country in two sports, football and boxing. Throughout my life and still now, people describe me with this word, tomboy. I'm not massively offended by this word, but it is not the right way to describe a professional female athlete. It doesn't tell you who I am, what I've achieved, what I've overcome, what I stand for. Likewise, this is my niece Ruby, who went to sports day in her kit. She was called a tomboy. It's also not the right way to describe a little girl who just loves sport or supports a certain team. So let's question, challenge and change the labels that we place upon people. And thirdly, 
We're always comparing women's sports to men's. Actually, if we look at the story of women in sport, it's remarkable. Let's take one example, women's running. This, by the way, is my 60-year-old mum who runs for the England Masters. She'll be fuming that I've told her age, but she's the pocket rocket. So I had to have her up here. At one time, women weren't allowed to run more than 200 metres and we were banned from the marathon. Some of the reasons for that, they said, we would get big legs. Horror. <laughs> we might get a hairy chest. Might suit some people. And thirdly, that our uterus would fall out. Now, I've done loads and loads of sport, so my uterus fell out ages ago. <laughs> to be honest, I had no idea what it was for, but it's long gone. But how ridiculous that these kind of things went unquestioned and held back the progress of women's running for so long. You might have heard of Catherine Switzer, who ran the Boston Marathon in 1967. When they realised she was a woman, they tried to drag her off the course. She did finish the race, and in 1972, the Boston Marathon opened up to women, and eight women ran it that year. Fast forward to 2017, 12,000 women ran the Boston Marathon, one of whom was Catherine Switzer, pictured here, now aged 70. After the race, they retired her number in honour of what she's done for women's running, and you'll be dead pleased to know she kept a uterus. Good news. I believe talent is universally distributed, so opportunities should be too. The ban on women's football lifted in 71. Our Lionesses have now reached two World Cup semi-finals, and we've got a professional women's league in this country. That's remarkable. Thanks to Jane Couch, the ban on women's boxing was lifted in 1998. We've now had Olympic and Commonwealth Games medalists, and we've got hundreds of amateur female boxers in this country and over 30 professional female boxers. That's amazing. Amazing things happen when people are given opportunities. That's why gender should never be a barrier to human potential. Parents contact me now whose little boy loves ballet, but he gives up because he's picked on. The daughters are being told they shouldn't do this sport or that sport. Men and women facing stigma because they do something that goes against these traditional gender stereotypes and ideas of what's masculine and what's feminine. We need to do better so that people can just follow the things they're passionate about. That's the message I try and get across when I visit primary schools, to tell them there shouldn't be stuff for boys and stuff for girls. If you're passionate about something and you love it and you enjoy it, you should be able to pursue it with your whole self. And that's what I consider to be part of paving the way for the next generation. And that next generation includes the little people I love most, my little nieces. This on the left is Ruby after we went to watch Man United Man City ladies at the Etihad in front of 31,000 fans and she was so inspired. And on the right, that's little Eliza who won Player of the Week at Footy Tots at Nursery. If this sparks a little dream and imagination in their mind now, they can actually be professional footballers. That was laughed at years ago. Now it's a reality. So if that's where we are now, just imagine where we're going to go. But none of this is easy. Change is never easy. And like Brene Brown says, you can choose courage or you can choose comfort, but you cannot have both. And she's right. This is me walking into the boxing arena to fight for that national title. Today, I'm in this arena. Every one of us have a different arena that we walk into. Sometimes it can be daunting, nerve-wracking, there's pushback. This is not, in any of the speakers today, including me, this is not in our comfort zone to speak to you. But you know what, that's okay, because I believe in what I'm doing. I believe in my purpose, I know my why, and I'm really passionate about what I'm talking about. So I will be prepared to choose courage every time and walk into any arena I have to, to try and make things better for the next generation. And finally, if I could go back to her, I would tell her, kid, this is going to be tough. You're going to be called names. You'll be spat out at school. You'll be told you can't play football, can't go to the Olympics or Commonwealth Games or European Games. You'll even achieve your dream and then you won't get a belt. But I would tell her to keep going, 100% to keep going. Because I'd tell her she is going to have some of the most fantastic experiences imaginable. And that she's going to be part of one of the most powerful things on the planet for making a change, which of course is sport. And I would also want her to know that what she goes through is going to lead to her becoming this woman that I am today. Someone who's proud of who I am, proud of who I am, proud of what I do, and who will do everything I can to make things better for the next generation. And that I will try my best to bring as many people along with me on that journey as I can. Which is why I'm really grateful today, because each and every one of us in here can be part of paving the way and making things better for the next generation. So you better add. Thank you very much.